the thing we have. How are you all doing this morning? Yeah. yeah, it's a fine day for the Irish. Just letting everyone who may be a Trojan fan <laughs> by a 35 point seat beat the Trojans. Uh, oh, those Irish. oh, sorry. I forget myself. This coming from the guy who didn't even see the game last night. <laughs> I was falling on my smartphone. It looked like the quarterback played pretty well for SC. No one really cares, Reverend. Yeah! <laughs> well, I have to give you something to take into your practice today, Brett. All right, so welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living here in Granada Hills. My name is Reverend Michael McMorrow. I'm the spiritual director, believe it or not, here at this center. <laughs> and we welcome all who practice their beliefs with faith and love. And so uh, our presider today is uh, Reverend Kathy Lyons. Let's welcome her straight up. I want to mention our ofrenda before we get... This is a public ofrenda. So if you would like to honor uh, someone or... Two-legged or four-legged uh, with the ofrenda, you're welcome to do that. So, we have a little thing we like to do here called hugs and handshakes. Let's take two minutes and say good morning. Good morning. One, two, one, two, three, four. We're going to break out the hats and who Josie comes home We're gonna rev up the motor scooters When Josie comes home to stay We're gonna park in the street Sleep on the beach and make it Go down the jam till the girls say when Lay down the lawn and break it When Josie comes home
another electric guitar there kind of spices it up, yeah? Yes. So I just wanted to bring our attention to, uh, we have someone, so I know some of you have a long commute to come here to church on Sunday, and I appreciate that. But we do have a fellow who came all the way from England just to be here this morning. Andy, stand up and say hello. So, all right, good to have you here, buddy. All right, so let's all take a deep, conscious breath. Allow ourselves to surrender to this eternal now moment as we come together for our call to service, which we call lighting the flames of faith. And so this morning, the candles have already been lit because uh, to facilitate our ofrenda. But uh, we know that we perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life which acknowledges that all peoples, all faiths, all sentient beings come from the one great universal presence, which we call spirit. And that fundamental to this truth is a unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here this morning. So the first candle, pick any one you like, the first candle is for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light a second candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the third candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the fourth candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the fifth candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. The sixth candle we light for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ Consciousness as the path of love. We light the seventh candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of submission to the will of God as the highest calling. We light the eighth candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the ninth candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. The tenth candle we light for all those who are as yet unaware of the power and presence of spirit in their lives and for the space we hold for them here at our center. And as Reverend Kathy lights the healing candle, please put silently into the light the names of anyone you wish to have experience the healing flame of God's eternal love. In this moment in this place I remember who I am Letting fear and worry fall away from me I open my eyes and I see There is all sets us free there is only love as I speak my word in the first person for each one here recognizing that there is only love that God is love and that God is in every aspect of my life in my health, in my finances, in my relationships, career, any endeavor, I know right now that I embody that love of God. And so I experience love in everything that I do, that I have loving relationships, that I treat my body with love, and that I treat all things in my life with complete love, that love is in my finances, in my career path, in my, um, in every single part in all my interests that I have love and passion with everything that I do.
that I see everyone through the eyes of God and through the eyes of love and that I welcome the divine in them as I know right now that all my connections with others is our heart to heart God to God relationships and so I am so grateful and appreciative for this beautiful day for this beautiful Sunday celebration just celebrating my life and all the blessings that I have celebrating with the beautiful music with Reverend Mike's talk with the people doing the sound and the ushers and greeters and everyone here I see the eyes of God I see God in each and every person and I do give thanks. I give thanks right now for this beautiful unfolding morning. And with grateful thanks, I release my word to the law. I know it is done, I know it is so, and together we say, and so it is. Well, good morning. This topic, the topic for the um, CSL is, is love is safety. And today, the topic is, for the su this Sunday, the perfect relationship. Now, when we think of perfect relationships, we often think of romantic relationships, our soulmate. But the truth is, Dr. Ken Gordon said, our spiritual, who's our spiritual leader of CSL, that we are always in the perfect relationship. When we know only the goodness of life around us, when we understand it, embrace it, our relationship with life improves. So, all relationships are perfect relationships. I remember years ago, Marianne Williamson said on a tape, there's no such thing as a failed relationship. All relationships, we, everyone in our life was in our life for some purpose. Whether it was a loving, happy relationship, or if there was a painful relationship, then all we can do in cases like that is see how we can grow from it. Now, last Wednesday, Joy and Andrioli, a therapist, did a workshop on communication. And she was taught, you know, she had this technique on how to communicate with people, especially if we're upset about something. And she had this formula. But basically what it was, it was if we come from a place of love, when we communicate with others, we'll make more impact than if we come out, you know, with blaming or accusing. And I've noticed that in my own life. If I start pointing fingers and blaming somebody and getting in this big confrontation, people will just shut down. But communicating from a place of love, it's easier to resolve a conflict. Now, having a loving relationship with other things, non-live beings too, I think, although everything's a live being, I've realized that um, I wanted to have a more harmonious home. And after doing the energy of money class last summer, and one of the projects and assignments were to, you know, clear out stuff. And this is an ongoing thing, but I've lived in my place 20 years, and I realized that I needed to do more <coughs> of that. But I needed to do it from a place where I love my home, I love a harmonious space, so I'm going to do what I can to, you know, on a daily basis to clear the clutter. Instead of just looking at it and saying how, oh, I hate housework, or trying to just look at, um, th trying to make these affirmations, I love housework, I ha love housework, when I really don't. But if I can do it through a place of love, I love my home, so I, so I enjoy a harmonious, aesthetic home. You know, another thing too with health, coming from a place of love is really important. You know, it's interesting because a lot of times when I get in conversations with people, especially with women, and I hope I'm not perpetuating a stereotype, we'll talk about food and kind of demonizing food, how, you know, if we eat that, that's going to be really bad and we're going to get fat. I don't know if men do that. I think men talk about sports mostly. I don't think they talk about diets and stuff. I don't know, Mike could, I don't know what he, but anyway, <laughs> but anyway, instead, I need to come from a place of, I love myself, I want to treat my body with love and nurturing, so I'm going to be drawn to um, incorporating a healthy lifestyle, you know, eating healthy foods, not sitting in front of the TV eating snacks. It's really coming from a place of love and respect for myself that I can really make the positive changes. So, just know right now that anything in our life, 
that we want to change. We do it from coming from a place of love. And that really is the most powerful thing. And as Ernest Holmes says, love points the way, but law of cause and effect makes it possible. And so it is. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you. Please welcome uh, David and Kent and Ken Dupron on lead guitar today. And uh, some of you may have noticed I did turn my Dodger pillow around. <laughs> yes, we're going to the World Series. Very, very happy about that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so we are lucky that we get to do a little Peter Gabriel and Sting today. Uh, we're always thrilled when our next singer is here. Please welcome Miss Angela Carol Brown. One, two, one, two, three, four. as a meditation and those he plays never suspect he doesn't play for the money he wins he doesn't play for respect he deals the cards to find the answer the sacred geometry of chance The hidden law of a probable outcome The numbers lead a dance I know that the spades are the swords of a soldier I know that the clubs are weapons of war I know the diamonds mean money for this art That's not the shape of my heart He may play the jack of diamonds He may play the queen of spades He may conceal a king in his hand while the memory of it fades I know that the spades are the swords of a soldier I know that the clubs are weapons of war I know that diamonds mean money for this art That's not the shape of my heart that's not the shape, shape of my heart. I told you that I loved you You'd maybe think there's something wrong I'm not a woman of too many faces The mask I wear is one Those who speak know nothing and find out to their cost Like those who curse their luck In too many places 
and those who smile are lost. I know that the spades are the swords of a soldier. I know that the clubs are weapons of war. I know that diamonds mean money for this art. But that's not the shape of my heart. That's not the shape of my heart. That's not the shape, shape of my heart. Thank you, Van. Thank you, Angela. That was beautiful. Really beautiful. Good morning, everybody. I'm here to highlight some of the announcements for this week. You can also find them in your program. There's a calendar in here that uh, we invite you to pay attention to because there's wonderful things going on here at our center all the time. And I just want to say thank you for filling the first box of our food bank donations. I'll be taking that this week to CSUN Women's <coughs> Center. And the invitation continues. Just bring a can of beans on Sunday and pop it in the box, a box of rice, some pasta, something. And we're going to be uh, making that a regular thing. Also, there's a spiritual mind treatment form in your program. If you would like treatment from the practitioners here at the church, fill this out. We'll make sure you're held in prayer. And also a contact update information sheet. If you haven't filled that out yet as a member, please do so. Uh, today, the bereavement support group meets at 1 o'clock. So if you're struggling with the loss of a loved one, please uh, join us today at 1 o'clock for that group. Also this week on Wednesday, October 25th. Wow, there's a lot going on on Wednesday, October 25th. There's Sangha, meditation, and more at 9.30 in the morning. There's visioning with the Rev at 6 o'clock. There's a healing meditation that's actually the, the, the Relationship and Communications Workshop, the second week, part two. If you didn't come last week for part one, it doesn't matter. Come to part two. Wonderful tips on how to communicate, as Reverend Kathy talked about, in a more loving, cherishing way. And then Saturday, October 28th at 9.30 here is the uh, Course in Miracles. Uh, the, how do you say it? Samhain, Samhain Festival of the Dead, uh, Wednesday, November 1st at 7, 30, at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary, facilitated by Reverend Jeannie. Uh, that's going to be wonderful. It's always wonderful. Um, Samhain, there it is. Okay, Irish Gaelic for summer's end, November 1st. Uh, I, I think there's still a sale going on in the bookstore. I think there might still be some items. Not sure. Okay. Um, if but the but the bookstore is undergoing a transformation, and it's really going to be a beautiful gift shop. So plan on doing some Christmas shopping right here in our our bookstore slash gift shop. I think that's all I got. Thank you. Please stand for our Declaration of Principles. We believe in one universal spirit manifesting through all, natural and incarnated in us. We believe that the universal spirit is personal to and reveals itself through everyone who recognizes its presence. We believe that our faith operates upon a law of mind which automatically manifests in our experience according to that faith. We, we believe, believe in the, the unity of all life and, and in the immortality of the individual soul forever expanding. 
We believe in the eternal goodness, the eternal loving kindness, and the givingness of life to all. Give yourselves a hand. That sounded good. So, Andy, when you go back home, when you go to the pub and they have the sing around, you can tr share the song with them. <laughs> you are the light <laughs> in this world. You'll be a popular guy. Yeah, I'll try that one in Leitrim next time I'm there. All right, Uncle Frank, let's go. All right, so uh, you can't see this uh, because of the way that our old friend is uh, decorating things, but it says here, the perfect relationship. That's our talk title today. The perfect relationship. Yes, it's possible. The perfect relationship. We're going to explore that. And uh, so our talk notes this month or this week actually come from Dr. David Bruner, who's a really fun uh, senior minister up in um, Center for Spiritual Living, San Jose. And he knows about relationship because he grew up in a home with five older sisters and one bathroom. So, yeah, he likes to speak to that. So, you learn how to get along in that scenario. And uh, so he shares this, that as the thing itself, the thing itself, spirit, as the thing itself is infinite, the possibilities for the perfect relationship are infinite. So the following are some ideas to try on. Like trying on an old pair of shoes. So you can see if they fit. And if they don't fit, come back next week and try on another pair. So that's all, David. So uh, you got these. These look pretty comfy, yeah? And I, wanting to invite women to come back, I thought I'd have lots of shoes because I do know that for sure. Yeah. Women dig shoes, yeah? yeah? They look pretty comfortable. Yeah, I'd wear those. <laughs> All right, so the perfect relationship, like an old pair of shoes, maybe. What the heck is perfect anyway? What is perfect? 
as it happens, perfect is a very interesting word, I think, because it can be used as either an adjective, as a verb, or a noun. I don't know how many words qualify for that, but I imagine it's not as many. So as a noun, it works like, so how's it going? Or how was the performance? Perfect. Right? So as a noun, that's how that works. As an adjective, uh, Webster's came up with this. Having all the required or desirable qualities or characteristics as good as it is possible to be. Perfect. As in, she strove to be the perfect wife. <laughs> that was in the dictionary, honey. All right. <laughs> it's like, I love the way spirit rises up to support me sometimes. So, synonym, so ideal synonyms. Am I saying that right? Cin cinnamon. Not cinnamon, but cinnamon. Yes. So ideal, model, without fault. F faultless. Flawless. Consummate. Quintess. Thank you. Uh, exemplary. Best and ultimate. And then there's another one. Absolute. Complete. As in a perfect stranger. Now, as a verb, this is interesting, I think. So, here's the idea of perfect as a verb. To make something completely free from faults or defects. How many of us are in relationships where we engage in that? To make something completely free from faults or defects. Or as close to such a, a condition as possible. As in, he's busy perfecting his bowling technique. But it could also be, we have the technology, we can rebuild him. <laughs> right? To make completely free of faults or defects. Or, let's say you have a diamond in the rough. Right? You can bring a little polish to the guy. Improve. To make better, polish up, hone, refine. Put the finishing or final touches on to brush up, to fine tune. Now, women are not the only ones. In fact, by the way, if, uh, well, let me just say, women aren't the only ones who can engage in this idea. We have the technology. We can rebuild them. So <clears throat> there's uh, this uh, fine lady. Come on, that's funny. <laughs> This is the bride of Frankenstein, of course, and two men who were building the perfect woman from parts of other women, as it turns out. Okay, that's a little too harsh. All right, then how about this wonderful, loving scene? And of course, I love this photograph because they are bound together, holding hands, looking at each other. Uh, and of course, there's also a, a nut for every bolt. <laughs> so when the next time you think all the good ones are taken, just remember this. There's a nut for every bolt. Okay. <laughs> so relationships, relationships are great, aren't they? I mean, they're the th they, they can take us to the highest heights, the lowest lows. They can um, uh, be hilarious. And yet they can be uh, sources of great sorrow at the same time. Uh, it's, a wonderful, a it's a wonderful dynamic of life. So what I know about this idea uh, of relationship, and in my own uh, experience of relationship, is that there are those here in the room this morning who, who have experienced or are now experiencing what it is like to be in perfect relationship or to have experienced perfect relationship. People who have had uh, long-lasting marriages. <clears throat> and then I know that there's a few of us who've had to take a couple stabs at it a few times. No pun intended. <clears throat> but before, before all of these relationships, and for us to really and fully and completely 
experience the infinite possibilities for good that are available to us in relationship. We have to look from outside of ourselves to rather look within ourselves. If we really want to come to understand the way relationship works, we really have to start with the relationship within ourself. And I know that for many, for people who are maybe even, who want to be in relationship, maybe even have been longing to be in relationship for some time, that the one thing they don't want to hear is, well, you know, this is a good time to be with yourself right now and to just get in touch with your feelings and to, you know, and, and that's like the last thing you want to hear when you're in that thing. You know, what you want to be with the other and experience that, that sweet spot. And yet, if we want it to be a lasting, a lasting experience rather than a fleeting moment, we really have to have the courage the courage and the commitment to go within and connect with the relationship that we have within ourself. So the question that I have found most helpful in this, and, and sometimes unwelcome, I might add, the question I have found most helpful is to simply ask, am I the kind of person that I would want to be in relationship with? The first time I heard that one, I went, oh, mm. <laughs> right? Because the first time I, someone hit me with that question, I think it was Dr. Maureen, and I was like in my first year post-divorce. And I really wanted it to be all her fault. And it, it kind of still was then. <laughs> right? It wasn't until I started working with it where I started to see, oh, I had a part in this. Right? There were some unhealthy aspects of this that I, that I contributed to and that I was. So, am I the kind of person I would want to be in relationship with? Am I the kind of person I'd want to be a friend to? Now, that was a little easier because we're stepping back a little bit. You know, loyal, trustworthy, friendly, kind. You know, the scout law. Yeah, so I, I was pretty good in that realm. But when I ask myself, am I the kind of person, and I'm asking you, am I the kind of person that I would want to date or to be married to? And I think, you know what? It's actually a good question for any of us who are in committed relationship to ask ourselves every day, on a daily basis. Am I the kind of person that I would want to be married to? And sometimes, maybe, sort of. <laughs> Some days. But, you know, we can always start over. The thing that's lovely about this uh, science of mind teaching is remembering we are always at choice. We are always at choice that we can think a different way. If we think a different way, we're going to act a different way. If we're going to act a different way, we're going to have a different behavior. If we have a different behavior, our life is going to change. If our life changes, everyone else's life changes. Because we've done our own work. And we have a cosmic law of cause and effect that's backing our play. Now, sometimes that's not always apparent in the present moment. Right? But when we, when we look in the rearview mirror, right, we can kind of say, oh... Yeah, boy, that really actually kind of worked out. That's why one of the strongest affirmations we can say about our life is, everything is always working out for me. Everything is always working out for me. <clears throat> so, this idea of being in perfect relationship... Uh, Dr. David, who's a really fun guy, by the way, uh, he quoted Dr. Laura Schles Schlesinger. Schlesinger? Yeah. She, is she still on the radio? Anybody? Yeah, okay. So uh, anyway, uh, so I used to listen to her 
back in the day. Yeah, before I found Rush Limbaugh, of course. All right. So, so here are the four criterion. Here are the four criterion to use whether or not you want to date someone. But I thought we could play with it a little bit and tweak it, right? This idea that we are responsible for our own experience. So what is the inquiry? What question must I ask myself if I want to have uh, a deeper uh, connection? That's really what we're looking for, yeah? We're looking for connection. We're looking for safety. You know, this idea of love is safety. I want to be vulnerable, right? You know, it's okay if you don't know all the answers, I did not know that one of, the, one of the options that I could say in life was, you know, I don't know. That's a, that's a powerful thing. You don't have to have, we don't have to have all the answers. Why is this? Again, coming from the spiritual perspective of life, we know that we are living in the divine flow of life, that everything is always working out for me, that I live in the power of choice, that through my spiritual practice I am aligning with that pattern of perfection of life itself that is within my very being. In fact, it is the truth of who I am. And I am willing to step into this space as courageously as I can to allow that authentic self to come forward. That is the light. That is the light. Because by our nature, let me tell you something, you don't come to a church like this unless you have a, long, a loving heart. Unless you have something within you that is longing to connect with the world and make it a better place. Am I right? I see you guys doing this throughout the time that I've been here. And we get to practice that here. We get to practice that here. We get to practice it in class. And then take it out into the world. Love is safety. Our relationships are safe places because we're coming to them from a place of love and compassion and respect. So one of the tools that Joy was speaking to on Wednesday was the idea of um, stand... Was it, hun? Stand? Stand and stroke. Stroke and stand, actually. So the idea is that you first acknowledge the other person has a right to have their experience of life, regardless of what we think about it. Right? We're, we're really consciously working on stripping away judgment, in other words. And then to have the courage to stand in are the... Um, our own convictions about life. But this is because we've taken the time to get to know ourselves, to be in relationship on the deepest way, to know not only the things that we don't want. Most of us, by the time we get to 30 or 40, we know what we don't want. Many people rarely, rarely make the time to figure out what it is they truly want. This is, our, this is a point of power. If you are not experiencing the sweet spot of life right now, right where you're sitting today, just simply ask ourselves, what is it that I want? And to know, to know there's a power, a presence, a source. Life itself, longing to express that through your life, it, you, using your life as the vehicle to express and experience more of what? More of itself. More of life. That's a pretty revolutionary idea, I think. So the four criterion, do I respect him or her? What do you respect about yourself? That's a good thing to know. Yes? Can you name three or four things? What do you admire about yourself? Oh, I'm not supposed to admire myself. You know, that's egotist. Why not? I'm a very loving and kind person. It's taken me years to be able to say that without feeling weird about it. 
But it's true. Now, people had to point it out to me. I know it sounds kind of weird, huh? Now, you didn't know me before I was a minister. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so do you support? <laughs> so I get a license to be that way now, right? But so do you. We all do. What do, we, what do we admire about ourselves? How do we support ourselves? Right? How, would, how do we, <coughs> excuse me, how do you support him or her? How do I support myself? Do I give myself time? Do I give myself the gift of time? Do I give myself the gift of stillness? Do I take care of my body temple? Do I allow myself to have a massage? Once in a while. Do I allow myself the privilege of watching the SC Notre Dame game? <laughs> By the way, I got to tell you why this game means so much to me. Because I remember Anthony Davis, who scored six touchdowns against the Fighting Irish. He scored two kickoffs, I think one punt return, and the others from the Lions. I mean, they're, um, they're spectacles. And all of life's answers, all of life's, the questions of life are answered in any SC Notre Dame game. I'm telling you. <laughs> <clears throat> so are you attracted? So after all of these other things, are you attracted to him, her? Turning it around. What about you is most attractive to you? What is it that, you know, I really like that about me. I just really watched myself go through something really difficult. And in the old days, I would have been spitting nails and kicking over trash cans. And today I handled it, you know, I handled that well. I was calm. I, could, I was able to bring a compassionate heart in this moment of discord. I was willing to hear, as Rumi says, to hear with the ear of the heart. To seek first to understand rather than not be understood. Right? These are old guys, 1400s. It's not like we haven't known how to do it. It's just in this modern life, we've been told we've got to armor up. Only the strong survive. It's dog eat dog. These are old ideas. If we want to survive as a species, if we want to experience life from the sweetest realms of what's available, those, pos those infinite possibilities for good, you need to be comfortable in that soft spot. And when, if it's feeling vulnerable and you're a little bit scared, that's it. That's the spot. Yeah, right? It's like the coach, you're used to playing on second team and the coach says, okay, get in there. You know your assignment. Right? And then, like they say, I know you guys are getting tired of football, but that's, we're, that's just where we're at today. So they have a saying in the, in the New England Patriots, just do your job. Just do your job. What's our job? To know the truth, that the power and presence of the divine is right here in this moment. So when we're getting all stirred up, mixed up, twisted, shaken this way and that, we can, we can just say, just do your job. Just do your job, Andrea. Just do your job, Mike. Just do your job, Lucia. Right? Because ultimately we know, Holmes points out to us, that if we see only unloveliness in others, it is because unloveliness is a strong element within ourselves. That the light throws on others, that the light <coughs> he throws on others is generated in his own soul and sees them as he chooses to see them. So he's speaking to that in the negative, but turn it around in the positive. Right? That we see only loveliness in others as we have loveliness as a strong component of our own self. 
that we throw the light, that this light of spirit, on others. Because this is the way we choose to see them. And in this way, then, another thing that Holmes says, that has been said that we can know God only insofar as we can become God. So what, what are aspects of spirit we would most like to demonstrate more of in our life? Because the fact is, is that you and I are already demonstrating aspects of spirit, right? We just want to do it consciously and invite more of it to be soft enough to allow that to come through, right? To take off the pads, to take off the helmet, right? And meet each other in the middle of the field and just say, hey, you know, good game. Good game, Marty. Right. Then the next day we get up, get out there and do it again. So let's call our uh, musicians up. And I'm going to leave you with this. So Lord Schlesinger was talking about marriage. I'm going to change it around a little bit. Is there any such thing as a perfect relationship? Yes. And... It does not mean everything goes right. It does not mean everything goes your way. It does not mean uh, you're feeling romantic all the time. And if this is uh, how you think relationship is supposed to be, there's a wonderful program for you. A wonderful 12-step program <laughs> that allows you to understand that we're not changing anything except ourselves. put my hand over my heart right now. <laughs> oh, God save the queen. <laughs> Very nice. <clears throat> so as we go about our business today, let's think about how we can bring the light from within and share that with others. Right? Let's explore how we can be uh, the, uh, and know that we are an expression of the divine and we are consciously participating with that idea. That we are allowing ourselves to be still and know what it is that we want in life. And that we set our compass heading on that idea. That we know in, in, in knowing what we want that the universe is automatically uh, conspiring to bring forth the highest and best experience of itself by means of your life, by means of my life. And let's see how that shows up today and then come back and check in next week. And uh, check in on, on Wednesday and check, Joy will give you some tools on that too. So thanks for listening. Let's have a song. so long sometimes days pass and this emptiness fills my heart when I want to run away I drive off in my car but whichever And all my instincts, they return And the grand facade so soon shall burn Without a noise, without my pride I reach out from the inside Oh See the doorway to a thousand churches 
the resolution of all the fruitless searches. Oh, I see the light and the heat.
Very nice. Let's give him some more love. Yes. As we prepare our gifts for the offering, we'll call our ushers forward. Spirit gives through me. Spirit receives through me. Spirit lives and breathes through me. Spirit lives and breathes through me. Spirit gives through me. Spirit receives through me. Spirit lives. just a moment longer recognizing and knowing that God is our source, our substance, our supply. And so from uh, the generous heart of the individual from which these gifts have been offered here this morning, <clears throat> we recognize the consciousness and the generosity that went along with that. And so uh, uh, as these gifts have been presented here this morning, we representing the heart of this community receive these gifts with deep uh, respect and appreciation as we know, they go, they go forth to heal, to prosper, and to bless. Uh, the vision and life of each person here, the vision and mission of this center, anyone connected to it in any way, that we extend this knowing and this blessing to our community of Granada Hills, our city of Los Angeles, our state of California, our United States of America, all of its churches, temples, mosques, schools, universities, the people who support them, the people who uh, attend them that we know for our planet as well, that all is an expression from the very mind of the divine itself. And to the extent that we attune with this truth, we see it demonstrating in all ways, great and small. This lifts our hearts. We feel a sense of grace that empowers us into ways of living that lift ourselves and others. And for this, we are truly grateful and acknowledge this by saying, and so it is. So please help me think. Uh, Swiss Miss, our lovely Rita, and Miss Chloe. Hi, Piper. How you doing? Are you, are you going to say hi this morning? Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hi. What'd you do back there today? I prayed. You you prayed. You you played through or prayed through playing. And I cut. And you made. Oh, and this you made. Can I show this to everybody? Okay. Very nice. Thank you, Miss Rosalie and friends. Would you like to share something? So, well, you got a lot of bling on yours. Boy, look at that. What would you like to say? I wanted to say I... Um, <coughs> Daddy and Mommy. Daddy and Mommy and Amma. Okay. That's, that's enough. All right, and then we have Rosa and Paula are here. Would you like to share anything? <laughs> They're always fine till they see you. Okay. So what did you guys do? Sugar skulls. Pardon me? We made sugar skulls. Sugar skulls for the ofrenda? Mm-hmm. All right. So is there anything you'd like to share about that or outside of making the skulls? These are not tempting. <laughs> These are not tempting. Okay. You know, you shouldn't have told them that. You should have offered them to people first. Oh, very nice. Is this salt or sugar? Sugar. All right. No, Can I pick it up? Dry. So, no. Okay. That's why we made them this week so we could decorate them next week. Okay. Right. So this is part of the uh, 
Mexican, well, Latin American tradition, depending on where you come from. So thank you for participating. We have some friends I know. So the ofrenda is available. It is a public ofrenda. Bring your mementos of those who have gone before us. And uh, so in uh, Latin homes, you'll see cigarettes, you know, things that people liked in life. And you'll have images and stuff. Beer. Beer. Right? Yes, yeah, so whatever it is, so one for you and one for them. I don't know exactly how it works, but there you go. All right, so, and then uh, the other thing, if you really like the music today, let's give them some love. And you know, you can, you can go on, uh, on Yelp and on Google Plus. So we have a site. You can, you know, say something nice about them on Facebook too. All right, so great having you all here this morning. We're going to ask the practitioners and ministers to circle the room as Reverend Kathy prays us out, and we'll see you next week. So join me, please. As I speak in the first person for each one here, recognizing that presence and power, which is God, which is love, which is loving relationships, which is all in life that is good, and I am one with God, one with its loving relationships, and all in life that's good, and I know right now that I'm in the relate, right relationship with all things, all people, all beings. I feel that love within me, and I emanate it, and I attract it in my life, so I know that everything I think, say, do comes from the place of love and I handle everything in my life with complete love and so I am experiencing the goodness of life and so I do give thanks I give glorious thanks for this beautiful morning that has unfolded with the music with Reverend Mike with everyone here I just give thanks just giving thanks that I am so blessed I am so loved and so with deep gratitude I release my word to the law as I let it be so and together we say and so it is please stand for the peace song Joe
till she comes home so good she's the pride of the neighborhood she's the rope and the live wire she prays like a woman with her eyes on fire joe would you love the scrapple so never say She's the best friend we never had She's the one 